I have read a lot of uh, papers and books about how to improve financial stability and how and what kind of regulation is currently being imposed to hopefully ensure that we will not have another crisis. Uh, for example, you have before. Basel III now and the Dodd-Frank um, Act. Do you think that the current um, uh, direction of regulation is a good direction? And also, I must say, I have not often heard, heard um, this view expressed, and to me it seems a very sensible uh, solution. Well, I was uh, just hoping to provoke you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what do you think about the current direction of regulation? Is this going to help or not? <laughs> Look, I think uh, focusing on regulation, improving transparency, for example, transparency is important. I mean, in 2008, regulators did not know who had what. I mean, they could see a partial vision of what maybe let's say certain US banks had in US or what certain UK banks had in UK or what some French banks had in France, but so much was off balance sheet. Uh, so much was just simply not uh, communicated to regulators that the gist of Dodd-Frank, of Emir, of uh, AIFMD, of many of these regulations, by the way, these are incredibly taxing. These are not something you produce in six months. This mobilizes tens upon tens of billions of dollars of pounds of expenses, hundreds of thousands of people, parliaments, regulators, ministers. These are absolutely massive endeavors to produce that regulation. And it will be decades before, not one, probably several, assuming there's not new regulation in the meantime, before we actually understand the full impact of that regulation. Consequences intended as well as unintended. Uh, so my view is that the general, the gist of what is required, i.e. public powers no longer want to bail out the financial industry. We've been there before, by the way. This has been said before. A massive new regulation has been imposed. And it's, it's not just the Investment Act of 1934 in the US or Glass-Steagall. Go back to Sarbanes-Oxley. What has been the impact of Sarbanes-Oxley on the quality of accounting disclosure in the United States? Market. I mean, I'll let you answer that. But and there's, there's various views, but it clearly hasn't been effective in terms of protecting investors who in 2008 were looking at portfolios of investment banks, including Lehman, where a big chunk of balance sheet was just simply not reported, was off balance sheet, certainly under, under US gap rules. So I think in terms of regulation, the gist towards transparency, and I won't argue against it as somebody uh, employed by an infrastructure company, uh, equity business is a very tiny part of, of what we do. I'm not advocating recalibrating the fiscal environment in fiscal equity, if in the fiscal environment in favor of equity because it would benefit the LSE shareholders. Equity is a 6% of our global revenues. So not, not economically, uh, uh, statistically relevant. But moving back a lot of that multipolar, the old originate distribute, i.e. where a lot of people transact with each other without any regulatory knowledge, and more importantly, without any netting. See, if one bank trades with another one, trades with another one, and everybody keeps credit exposure to each other, from a, an initial transaction that might involve, say, a corporate client, you can multiply the exposure in the banking system by 10, 20, 50, 100 times. If you take all that multilateral exposure, centralize it in, say, a clearinghouse, the, a clearinghouse is the opposite of the bank. A bank takes capital from, from, from retail, from depositors, and then leverages it. A clearinghouse collects multi, uh, bilateral exposure from a whole range of participants, asset management and banks, nets it, and basically shrinks. LCH ClearNet, which is the, uh, the clearing uh, activities of the London Stock Exchange Group, have a global notional exposure of about $450 trillion. Net balance sheet is $1 trillion. Look at the reduction in leverage, 450 to one. We do the opposite of what the banks do. So as regulations promote transparency and then the netting of all that exposure that exacerbates, aggravates uh, a, a financial uh, stress, then you make the, equi the, the um, uh, economy more resilient. There is, however, aspects of that new regulation and there's tens upon tens of thousands of pages of the stuff. So stuff that it's still hard, I can't answer you because I may have a view, but it may not be borne out by the fact. But I'm convinced that there are aspects of current regulation that are actually pro-cyclical. And look at the gapping, for those of you who 
for example, monitor, follow government bond markets. October 15, 16 in the United States, US Treasury market gapped, something I'd never seen before. There's evidence that some of these pro-cyclical contraction increase in capital requirements are making markets illiquid that depends markets that depend on market making. And this is something that is not well understood, I think, in the investment firm, in the regulatory world, not, you know, not all financial assets are continuously traded, extremely liquid, and evolve, you know, can take basically absorb shocks in an efficient manner. A Vodafone trades very liquidly. You have a very tight spread and there's all sorts of volume, retail, institutional. An SME is going to trade, you know, three times a week. And there may be some very large asset classes that depend on market making. Government bonds can. A, a number of other complex securities. But if you raise the cost of capital, if you raise the regulatory onus on those who provide that liquidity in a markets that do not trade continuously, i.e. that trade discontinuously, but where at times an investor may want to buy or sell a very large amount of risk and they need somebody to stand on the other side as a principal to take the risk of their hands. This is what has made London, if not the top global financial center, I believe it is. New York might disagree, Chicago, Tokyo, Hong Kong, but the big difference between London and many other financial centers is as an investor, as a corporation, as a risk manager, you can call intermediaries in London, ask them for a solution to your risk problem, but then ask them to take it off your hands. And so the aspects of regulation in some of the, the new laws and reg uh, securities regulation you mentioned, I believe, are pro-cyclical and make it too expensive, too onerous for financial market participants in some important asset classes to continue to market make. And that we need to attend very quickly. Corporate bond market, government bond markets, so not just SME financing.